Hi everyone, welcome back to the third episode of Be The Hacker series. So in this episode, we are going to see how some tech, big tech giants like Google, Facebook and Snapchat were hacked due to parameter manipulation. And I've incorporated seven reports in this. The purpose of incorporating these reports is to give you a wider perspective as to how these attacks are being performed in the real world and also to just not get you limited to the simulated environment and give you ideas as to how these are being used by other hackers as well. So quickly I would like to highlight that we have a telegram channel Hacking Simplified 42. Uh, do check it out. I daily post around 3-4 to four articles collected from around the world on cyber security and similar kind of stuff. So yeah. Also, um, if the video was worth your time, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so as you don't miss any videos from the channel. Share this with your friends and colleagues and whomsoever you feel that would, would get benefited with this video. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with basic mission 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. An email script has been set up which sends the password to the administrator. Requirements are as usual like HTML knowledge and an email address. So email address we already have. This time Sam hard coded the password into a script. Not a good thing Sam. The password is long and complex. So that looks fine. And Sam is often forgetful. Oh man. So he wrote a script that would email his password to him automatically in case he forgets. Here is the script. So what's the script? So as usual we are doing an inspect element to check what the script is all about. So it's, it's a form where the, there is again a hidden input type which has a parameter 2 value equal to sam at the rate hack this site or to RG and submit send password to sam. Let's open the network connection, enable preserve log, disable cache, clear this already it's cleared but still, send. So this one is a send request, password reminder sent successfully, so let, let's look into this. So what was being sent, the form data was just to sam at that hack this site.org. So I think uh, by this time you would have developed some kind of acumen that uh, like changing the parameters would do something, right? So let's change this one to our email address. Okay. Now if we click send to Sam, it should send to us, right? Okay, password reminder sent successfully to my email address. Note if this is not the email address on your hack this profile, no email. So this is basically a, to avoid spam so that the, the servers don't go on sending spam. So I think we got that part right. Let's check our mail. So it's kind of similar to what we did in the third. So here's the password. So Sam at the hack this site is sending us. If you check. Your password reminder it was a subject. So this looks kind of pretty similar to what we did in the earlier level. Just that. Congratulations you have successfully completed basic 4. So we could just go on with the bug part but let's check the level 5 one also. Sam has gotten wise so I think Sam has gotten wise. <laughs> To all the people who wrote their own forms to get the password, rather than actually learn the password, he decided to make his email program a little more secure. So let's see what he did. It looks the same. Let's do this again. Send password to Sam. Let's see if it goes to us or not. Password reminder say if this is not the email. I don't see any difference here. Let's check our mail. Because password reminder was again sent to our email address. And again I got a reminder here. So 
So let's fill this one. So it's basically the same. I don't see any difference in the level 4 and level 5. Maybe it was to be done in a different way. I'm not sure. Maybe it had some JS or something. Let's check the mission. What does it say in the fifth mission part? So here it says similar to a previous challenge, but with some extra security measures in place. I, I couldn't find any security measures. Maybe we solved for in a more Uber way than it was supposed to be. I'm not sure. Let's check the source of both of these. I think. So here it was value to this and then password send password to some both of them look similar to me I don't see any difference except like here in the input type is submit and value is send password to sam whereas in this input type is submit and value is submit but that doesn't make a difference because the hidden parameter is the same and modifying that did the same to us i'm not sure but okay let's so we saw that there's a parameter tampering here going on which led to a lot of like secret information being disclosed in which case in this case it was sam's password which got us the level completed so yeah let's let's see a quite a few interesting reports the reports about google and facebook and other big companies which got like some day sensitive data disclosed and a lot of bounties were paid for doing this similar kind of stuff so let's check that out so web parameter tampering it's described by OASP as manipulation of parameters exchanged between client and server in order to modify the data application data that's being mentioned that's being sent so they have also mentioned some examples which as we could see the first one being that the parameter modified is the form fields which can be examples of web parameter tampering the second example goes into when we are man manipulating the hidden parameters so as we saw in the mission that we modified the email of sam to send the email password email to us instead of sam so in the third example we see that how an attacker can tamper with url parameters directly and then modify the application to respond differently so we would see in the google's bug report just now as how this is being exploited so the first report is a google bug bounty report so these are there are three reports involved in this which is from a researcher gargo turksani so, sorry if i pronounce that wrong so let's talk about the first google bug by the researcher he talks about invite spoofing where you could tamper the users to invite parameter and add like in the spreadsheet sharing link to send the invite with a different display name in the pre-filled model so coming to the technicalities, there's a user to invite parameter which hinted that multiple users could be invited and so he tried filling the values as is filled in the gmail app which is the format is name and then space and then in angular brackets you type the email and if you supply a comma separated value of to that so there would be multiple recipients of the mail. So the trick here is if you add instead of the name if you type a mail itself and then in the email for in the email field in the angular brackets you type a different email so something like this would happen you would see that the name is the email being displayed which is actually the name parameter is billgates at microsoft.com whereas the actual email or the person with whom this is going to be shared is attacker at evil.com so now talking about how this could be exploited is like suppose uh, there's an ex employee who has a spreadsheet link but he, he or she couldn't have access to the spreadsheet just because they are no more an employee of that company so what they could do is they could send this spoofed link and then the person who is to a person who has access to that spreadsheet and who could give access to other people so this attacker could send the spoofed link with the ex boss's email address and then the person would think that okay the boss requires the spreadsheet access so he or she would give them and which would eventually get to the 
attacker. So this was a low vulnerability thing. So it was awarded five hundred dollar by uh, Google. So now coming to the second bounty. This is to involve this to involve a careful observation on the researcher's part. So what he observed was uh, that when you upload a file or picture to a Google Slides, it used some legacy API, and this legacy API involved two calls to upload a single file. So the first one was this one, where you get a where you enter the parameter of photo ID and you in response you get something some random text, and this random text is actually a Cosmo ID which is sent again to a different URL endpoint to get the exact like the file parameter which you could use to directly access that file he went on to try different cosmo ids to get different files and he could access any google drive files so now the attack may seem as a huge because he could access any file from any google drive but remember that there's a catch here that this generated id is very unique so it involved a lot of complexity i mean like it and it was a very long random case sensitive unique strings and thus can't be guessed or brute forced easily i mean if you could brute force it you may as well brute force the victim's password and that would be way easier than brute forcing this id which was quite random and lengthy so this was also awarded the same bounty as the previous one the third one it's it's a bit tricky here he could get the victim to share their photos with the attacker without them being any wiser so what the researcher observed was that when you tried setting up a partner account in the photos dot google dot com, so you enter the partner's email address and then you like your Google login would pop up where you enter your credentials. After you entered your credentials, the like that photo or the slide whatever you tried to share that would be shared with your partner. So he copied the pop up URL and did some decoding onto it. Which further revealed him that the like the encoded string, which was here in the continue part, sorry, uh, which was here in the continue part, so it was basically decoded to this, and this contained a base six four encoded string, which eventually decoded to something like this, which contained a email. So what he did was he changed the email to the attacker controlled account, and then he again encoded the same string with this, and then did a my uh, URI encoding, which eventually brought to this like modified URL with his attacker's email address into it, but this was the final uh, URL with the change parameters. So when a victim opened that link, he or she's Google Photos would automatically get shared with the attacker. So since this was a high severity bug as well as a cool bug, so he was awarded a lead bounty. You could guess that with the number itself, that three one three three point seven zero bounty. So now coming to the second report, it's again from another tech giant that's Facebook. So this was in a service called Facebook Ad Account Test. So in this service, you could like test the conversion rate for your FB, Insta, and audience network ads, which like whatever conversion that they are causing. So uh, a malicious user can create test conversion using any app, which could reveal the sale and conversion of an active campaign. So he set up a test, and after filling the necessary information, he intercepted the request just before creating a text. And in the ad studies request, there was a request that was going to this URL endpoint. He changed the app ID to the victim's app ID. So what happened was the victim's test results or the victim's conversions and all those things came into it. So Facebook has a minimum bounty of five hundred dollars. And since this was leaking data, they paid a higher bounty of three thousand dollars, which was worth it because Facebook contains a lot of company sensitive data, and this would have leaked a lot of data. So coming to the third report, it's again from a big company, an app, Snapchat, which you would have heard. So here the attacker found that you could add the attacker's text when sending a download link from the Snapchat server. So when you entered your number on the Snapchat page for them to send a download link to you. It contained a CID parameter, which had the message which was being sent to the user. So the page looks like this. So here you would have seen that send a download link. So you enter your number, and then there was be a link would be sent to a parameter to your phone. So there is the same thing on Microsoft Outlook, and then a lot of apps have this functionality now on the page that you could send the link to your phone itself, so that you could download it on your phone. 
So the person, the researcher figured out that the CID parameter could be changed to send a spoofed link like to send a phishing message. So he managed to send a phishing message which contained a different link. And so what what the attack surface here was that since you control the parameters, the message that was being sent from the Snapchat server. So you could enter in like you could feed a malicious link which would like it which could which could download a malicious app or which could redirect them to a malicious page where they could ask they could ask they could be asked for their Snapchat credential as well. So there could be phishing that could be done here. So again a phishing scam could be done here using that. So that was that. So we have talked enough about phishing and data leaks. Now let's talk about some direct financial loss. So here in this report by an Indian hacker Avinash Jain who goes by the Twitter handle logic bomb underscore one. So here he shows us that while he was purchasing a suit, he found that there was an amount parameter that was going and that could be modified to any amount. And that's the amount that you would have even to pay eventually. So he found that the so there was a suit that was for around 1100 rupees and he changed it to 1 rupees. He could have gone even lower, I guess, but that's all that. And the order was successfully placed. So since this is a critical bug because that directly impacts the financial condition for the company. So yeah, if there, if there would have been the validation of the price in the backend server, that could have been like, this could have been prevented. So the last report for today also involves a similar hack. However, we could see the ingenuity of the hacker into bypassing the checks put in place. So it was similar to the previous report, but there were two hurdles. First, the price was being validated in the backend in response to the product ID being sent. So there was no direct price manipulation that would work here. So like there's a product price and then the quantity and all those things. So if even if you modified the product price, it would fetch the price in the backend itself using the product ID. So this product price parameter was just to be displayed for the front end and to the client and not to be validated. So client data was not being trusted here, which should not be actually. So, and the second thing was that there was no negative card price that could be added. So this was when he tried to add a negative quantity here for some product, which didn't work. However, he managed to place an order which satisfied both the condition as well as made a win for him too. So he, what he did was that was quite like quite good. So he, he added two products, one with the lower price and the other with a higher price. So the lower price one, he added a negative quantity and for the larger price or the higher price, he added a positive quantity, eventually totally bringing the total price to a lower value than the actual price. And thus he defeated this, like the backend logic and the security checks. So those security checks were also bypassed and this was good. So yeah. So that's all for today. I think you would have learned quite some ideas as to how to do parameter manipulation and all such. So thank you folks.